We are going on with question 8 of paper 1, November 2020. The graph of gx is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx. A cubic function having a y-intercept of 0 is drawn below. The x-coordinates of the turning points of g are negative 1 and 2. So here we have the y-intercept going through 0. A negative 1 and 2 are identified as turning points or stationary points. The first question reads, for which values of x will g increase? Now if we look at the diagram and we start in the left, we can see we're moving downwards. So this is a decrease up until negative 1. And from negative 1, we are increasing or we're moving upwards up until we reach 2. And after 2, we are decreasing again. So for which values does the graph increase? And we can see that the graph increases between the x values of negative 1 and 2. So 8.1, it'll be negative 1 and 2. So for 8.1, we can see that x is bigger than negative 1 or x is smaller than 2. The second question reads, write down the x coordinate of the point of inflection of g. Now on the diagram, the point of inflection is exactly in the middle of the turning points. So the point of inflection would be exactly in the center of negative 1 and 2. So x would be negative 1 plus 2 divided by 2. And that is equals to 1 half. So this is the x-coordinate of the point of inflection. 8.3. For which values of x will g be concave down? Now concavity, we always discuss from the point of inflection. So if I follow the graph from left to right up until the point of inflection, I see that it will shape upwards. So this is concave up. And after the point of inflection from left to right, if I follow it, I see the graph will move downwards eventually. So this is concave down. So the graph is concave down from x equals to a half moving towards the right. And the way we write that is, x must be bigger than 1 half. 8.4 If the first derivative of gx is equal to negative 6x squared plus 6x plus 12, determine the equation of g. Now we were given that gx is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx. And if I take the first derivative of these values, I would find that I have 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. And this will be equal to the first derivative that was given. So 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c is equal to negative 6x squared plus 6x plus 12, the first derivative that was given. Therefore, 3a would be equals to negative 6. 2b would be equals to plus 6. And the constant c would be equal to 12. That will make a equals to negative 2 and b equals to 3, and we already have c. Therefore, gx is equals to negative 2x cubed plus 3x squared 
plus 12x. 8.5. Determine the equation of the tangent to G that has the maximum gradient. Write your answer in the form of y is equals to mx plus c. So the first derivative of gx was given as negative 6x squared plus 6x plus 12. And this is a formula for gradient. Now it speaks about maximum gradient. On the diagram, the maximum gradient would be at the point of inflection. So that means x is equal to a half. So therefore, the maximum gradient would be negative 6 times a half squared plus 6 times a half plus 12, which is equal to 13 and a half. Now to find the equation of a tangent, I need a gradient, an x value and a y value. We already have a gradient and the x value. We just need a y value. So in our previous question, we found the equation of gx, which was negative 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 12x. And gx represents the y value. And we want to find the y value where x is equal to a half. So I substitute x with a half and I find that the y value is 6.5. And, and now using the equation of the straight line as found on the formula sheet, we have y minus 6.5 equals to 13.5 x minus 1 half. And if I multiply out and write in standard form, I have y is equals to 13 and a half x minus a quarter. And that is the equation of the tangent where the gradient is a maximum.